Eurorack is expensive, and especially when you're starting out. So it makes sense to wonder at what point is a modular system worth it. When I got interested in modular 10 years ago, I bought this beauty. The amount of stuff I got for the price was great. But since then, many, many, many more powerful and affordable analog patchable synths have hit the market. These are all good functional instruments. In most cases, for most people, that leads to a simple conclusion. With a small budget, standalone synths are the clear winner. For the price of a full synth, budget or boutique, you can only just get a case and a few modules. So if you'd extend the price range, how high do you need to go up before a modular becomes an instrument and competes with similar priced gear? Does it even ever? The answer is personal, because a lot of value of a modular lies in the fact that it's customizable and expendable. But here's my opinion. If my modular would disappear overnight, I would invest my savings in this setup. It's probably not the best option for you and definitely not the only option. But it allows me to demonstrate and talk about a couple of important concepts. The first thing is price. I played with different variations and setups and often ended up with a system around the same price point which on this massive scale isn't as high as you might think, but rather around here, somewhere from 1500 to around 2000 euros. I do want to make this very clear though. For that price, you can make something that's not a starter system or a good entry point you need to expand from. This example is a finished system and a great instrument, a complete modular setup that doesn't need expanding or other modules. However, around 2000, which is where this setup is, is still a lot of money. It means that the setup competes with high quality gear, like the Sub 37 or Pro 3 if you are comparing to Monosense. Things like the Perkins HD1 or Pulsar 23 when you're comparing to drum machines. And there are plenty of amazing polysynths, beatboxes and effects available for the price as well. But there we hit a very interesting point. Those examples are all dedicated instruments. A common problem with modular, and I don't mean to offend anyone here, is that it's easy to start by buying a few cool looking or popular modules and then expand over time with modules that draw the most attention. A bit like a kid in a toy store would. That strategy has the risk of ending up with a random collection of modules that are all interesting individually but don't work well as an instrument. And when your modular doesn't work as an instrument, you will start to wonder what beautiful designed purpose-built synth you could have had for the same price. There's a lot more to say about that. I wrote a bunch of scripts I'd love to turn into videos, but for now I'll stick to a few practical thoughts. When you're interested in a small price effective modular, a clear idea of what you want to do with it helps a lot. You might want to build a powerful custom mono synth, Or maybe you want a compact setup with multiple independent voices. Or a system that's a wonderful generative exploration lab. I mention those ideas because that's what I'd want and what I have built here. But your wish could be to have a six voice modular drum machine, a crazy deep effects processor or a tiny portable techno setup. All examples this system is not. Choosing what you want from your system is important. Whatever your choice is though, there are a few helpful guidelines when building a system. Start with a few core modules that can be used in flexible ways. Add utilities that open up patching creativity and the features of the core modules. And finally, focus on what's needed to complete an instrument rather than collecting interesting modules. In the next chapters, I'll go over each of those points in more depth, giving examples with the system that I built. I will also use this system in a couple of videos soon, where I dive deeper into patches and use cases. It's important to me, this is all completely unsponsored. So as always, if you'd like to support my work or you want to get access to PDF sheets with hundreds of patch ideas I used in my videos, have a look at my Patreon. You can also support my channel through affiliate links in the video description.
The first tip is to start with core modules that can be used in flexible ways. But what does that mean? First off, what core modules are for you depends on your wishes. Maybe it's a big digital wavetable oscillator that convinced you to go modular. Maybe it's a big effects module or a specific controller and so on. But a core module doesn't need to be a big and expensive unit. It can also be a clever utility module or unique modulation source. Most important, think about what you want from your setup and if the core module or modules serve that purpose. And next, see if those modules only serve one purpose or multiple. For example, I wanted this system to be rather classic, a powerful system that's a solid studio synth as well as a fun and deep generative setup to explore. For those reasons, the core modules here are rather classic parts, like oscillators, filters and modulation. But the flexibility is pushed quite far. This is maybe just best to show it. For example, for the oscillator bank, I used a combination of an analog and digital module, both priced very competitive for their features. Ona is an all analog oscillator with a great octave switch, all the basic wave shapes, including sine wave, as well as pulse width modulation, linear or exponential FM and sync. What stands out are the mixed wave shape outs and the two sub octave outputs. One is one octave and the other two octaves below the main output. This module sounds great. Clavis Twin Waves is a good counterpart to the Ona. It's fully digital but holds two independent oscillators. It offers all the classic wave shapes but all with wave shaping options. And it also has a sub oscillator output. So combined, this section offers three independent oscillators with three sub octave outputs on top. However, each channel of the twin waves can also be a flexible noise source with filter or resonator options. It can do complex sync sounds, ring mod sounds and one of my favorites, stacked saw waves. So again, this module on its own can be the source of an independent voice without a problem. On top of that, all three oscillators can function as LFO as well. Ona adds the nice effect of having the two sub oscillator outputs, which can function as a clock divider. And the Twin Waves offers deep LFO wave shaping and very interesting for a setup this size, a variety of powerful random voltages. That flexibility means these modules don't always perform the same function. Sometimes they are part of a large oscillator bank, sometimes they're the solo oscillator in a voice, sometimes they're a noise source or LFO or random voltage. The flexibility adds a lot to the options and the fun exploring and patching a modular. To me, that's what can make a small system compete with other gear. I did a similar thing with the filters. The Erica Synth Black Low Pass filter seems basic, as it's just a low pass filter. But it's reasonably priced and has a special power, this little drive switch. 
it's a very reliable filter that has a lot of character and a great sound. That drive switch makes sounds massive and takes care of the much sought after analog saturation, drive, distortion and warmth. The Qubit Prism is a great counter filter to that. This has an analog multi-mode filter, which offers low, high and bandpass filter modes. This adds a lot of flexibility and options next to the low pass only filter. Beside that, it also has a very interesting, although slightly quirky digital effects section. Not going to lie, Prism is probably the only weird duckling in this setup, because its sound is rather specific. But I like weird features as well. If it's not overdone, they add character to your system. Most important though, again, the combination of these modules add a lot of options. They offer reliable fat sounds, thick basses, classic high pass, low pass chain setups, experimental sounds and so on. They can be combined into a very deep filter section that goes beyond classic synths or be used to create two independent voices. For modulation, I only picked one module, the Chaos Devices Zadar, but that's because this one is rather amazing. I did a full video on it here if you'd like to learn more. It's one of my favorite envelope generators, about which I also did a video here if you're interested. However, this is much more than an envelope generator. The best way to look at it is as a quad complex signal generator. Each of those can be one of many shaped envelopes that can be gated or triggered, but they can also be looped and function as an LFO. There are many shapes that go beyond the classics and each can be shaped and modulated in many different ways. So it's also great for generative and experimental voltages. That is crucial for me in a setup like this. There's enough modulation for two full voices. and it offers enough creative voltages and deep modulation for self-generative setups. Then it can do things like chain envelopes, run phase shifted LFOs and each can even be used as an oscillator and run at audio rates. Also remember this system can use each of the three oscillators as voltage controlled LFOs, just in case more modulation is needed. That took a bit of time but I wanted to explain what I mean with flexibility. It also helps to understand the next chapters. Utilities are crucial in any setup. 
They bring modules together, bring out their features and allow for exploration and patching fun. Unfortunately, when you're starting out, it's easy to overlook their importance. The key here is to take a second and think about what's needed to get the most out of the core modules you picked. Very likely, that's mixing, attenuation and amplitude control. For example, in this setup, there are three oscillators, but it needs a mixer to combine them before going to a filter. Prism is a nice filter, but it only has a single CV input, which is not enough for me. So it needs a mixer to combine control voltages. Also, there are quite some inputs around the system that don't have attenuators. So the system needs them as well. VCAs are needed for volume control of multiple voices, but also to create modulated modulation and so on. Without utilities, this setup would be very limited and boring, no matter how cool the core modules are. For all these tasks, I picked two of my favorites. The Nano Modules Alt is a quad VCA done right. Three of the VCAs have full control, with manual offset and bipolar CV attenuator. Both of these controls are crucial when picking your first VCA. And the bipolar CV inputs are great for things like sidechaining and creative modulation ducking. Another thing Nano did well is chaining the outputs in a flexible mixer setup. Each output that is not used is summed to the next output. So you can use the four VCAs individually or as two 2 to 1 voltage controlled mixers or a 3 to 1 voltage controlled mixer and a solo channel. This allows for crucial signal flow options. Another module that's great for signal flow is the Happy Nerding 3x Mia. This is an all time favorite module. I made a video explaining its features here which you should definitely watch if this module is a mystery to you. In short, it has three horizontal sections. Each can function as a two input, one output mixer. All six inputs have a bipolar attenuator. So you can mix, attenuate and invert signals, both control voltages and audio. And when nothing is patched to an input, that input can be used to add or subtract an offset voltage to the mix. If you want, you can change sections, so you can also combine four or even all six inputs. Signal flow is so important, I can't even express it in a short video. But I see a lot of systems that don't have these good basics. That will keep your options limited and stuck in the same patch. If you don't use the added value of custom signal flow, it's hard to make a modular stand out from a fixed architecture synth. Paying for patchability of modules is just a waste of money if you don't use it. The final tip is to focus on what's needed to finish an instrument rather than collecting modules. Again, this is all personal, as it all depends on how you want to use your system. But a good start is to ask yourself how you want to control your setup and in what environment it's used. Also, are there any features still limited or problems your utilities can't solve? In this setup, the two modules that are a part of this tip are Bloom, which is a dual sequencer, and the Happy Nerding FX8, which is a great multimode effects module. Those two modules turn this system into an instrument with a dual sequenced voice, complete with enough effects to be used standalone. However, they are quite specific examples. You might want to sequence your setup from a DAW, in which case a multi-channel MIDI to CV converter will be better. Or maybe you want an external sequencer or keyboard, and so on. Similarly, maybe you want to use guitar pedals or your favorite plugins as effects, so you don't need to spend money on effects modules. More likely, it could be something completely different. The point is to think about and aim for those modules that make your setup feel like an instrument that works for you, rather than adding more and new fancy modules to it. Your setup might need a stereo mixer to complete the signal flow, or a dedicated headphone output or input module to feel complete. I know it can be difficult to focus and fight gas with Eurorack, as there are new and fancy releases hitting stores all the time but I often see starter systems for sale, which always makes me a bit sad. 
they often suffer from problems that I think could be solved with these tips and make people enjoy their choice to go modular more. So I hope this video helps a bit. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. If you'd like to learn more, have a look here. And as always, smash that like, subscribe and bell button if you want to see more modular content from me. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching and see you next time.